Thank you for joining us, Farhana. To start us off, Has Consult is the only real estate property development firm in Kenya and East Africa to start a property index. What's the motivation behind having such an index? The whole driver behind uh, starting the index was really the fact that uh, Kenya was a market that was growing, but a market that was growing without any formal system of information, especially in the real estate market. If you look at other industries, they do have form of research reports, but real estate was one of those that didn't. And uh, very much decisions were guided by your feel of the market, your general know, street talk of the market, as opposed to really saying, look, this is the data, this is the facts, this is what's happening. Um, and we felt there was this vacuum in the market that when you were trying to make decisions it wasn't substantiated it was just a little bit like I feel this is what you should do and so the index was really to take all this data that existed in the market and pool it together to give uh, the market a clear picture one simple picture that says this is what the market is doing and then explain that and I think with that kind of information to help buyers developers to make the right decisions the real estate sector has grown in leaps and bounds in the last decade, with returns outperforming those of the stock market. However, there is still a demand versus supply deficit. As an expert, what do you think should be done to bridge this gap? When you look, for example, at the upper segment of the market, you find that market is kind of in equilibrium. You know, there is supply, there is demand, and they even out, more or less, except for maybe some select few areas. The, the real sort of discrepancy in supply and demand comes when you move to the lower income side of the market. When you look at houses that are really affordable for the Kenyan population, where supply is very limited and demand is very high. Um, traditionally, developers didn't work so much in this market because it's a little bit more... It's a little bit more risky, I suppose, in the sense that developers must have the funding uh, because they have to finance the project. Your profit margins have to be very tight because you want to deliver a low-cost product. Um, and so if there's any change or fluctuations, it can really impact your cash flows. But if you look at uh, the market now, there are a lot more developers moving into that market. Jimmy Bora has done some very good schemes that are targeted to that. So it's a question of you know the developers who already have the expertise moving into the market and realizing that there's actually a huge opportunity for growth. In spite of tightening of the monetary policy by the central bank, most people still stay clear from mortgages, claiming that they're unaffordable. What do you make of this? I think slowly the market is coming to the realization that Property being the investment that it is, and it's not a, it's not a small investment, um, if you don't take that leap, sometimes you don't get into the market. So that mortgage gives you that first step to start off um, and get in. Now, I think the restriction, especially over the last year, has been the mortgage rates. And this will always be, um, the mortgage decision will always be about the money. How much am I borrowing? And how much do I have to pay back? And can I afford to pay it back? Um, with when the rent rates went up very highly, this caused a big problem, obviously. I mean, your salary is the same, so you cannot afford to fork out more in your mortgage repayments. So I think, you know, having home loans that are an at an attractive rate is a big part of spurring the market and making um, the process a little bit more easier for buyers, which, to be honest, most of the banks have been doing. Uh, but I think it's a question of just bringing, if the rates were a little bit more attractive, I think you'd have more people moving to that market. Now, with the enforcement of taxation of rental income by the government to a steep 30%, what impact does this have on housing development in Kenya? I don't think investors will shy away from property investment because of rental tax. The reason I say that is, number one, tax isn't implied in any income that you get. So whether you put your money somewhere else or in property, the income you get, you're likely to, to be taxed on it anyway. Number two, real estate investment has two returns. It has the rental return and it has the capital return. Now, you know, the capital growth in a form of appreciation that you get over the, pro of, over the lifetime of the property, that outweighs the rental. And any time you're making an investment decision, the sound decision would be to pick one that gives you both. So your capital gain is always more than your rental. So if you're paying 30% on your rental income, which is a smaller portion, it's not that much. So I know that there has been cases of landlords increasing rents, and um, I think that's maybe a little bit exploitive because the rent, the tax was always there, and it's not a huge portion of the income in terms of from the perception of what you're making out of the property. 
You are appointed as a director of the Nairobi Securities Exchange to steer the introduction of the Real Estate Investment Trust segment. Share with us more the effect of this segment to the real estate sector. The thing about real estate is that uh, when you look at the general characteristics of the market, the entry level is quite high. It's not a very liquid asset. So when you want to trade, if I need money tomorrow, I can't sell my property. I've got to wait a certain period. Um, and because of that, you find that a lot of investors are not able to access the market. What the REITs do is they convert that real estate investment into a more liquid uh, divided form of real estate so the entry levels for example are a little bit lower so you can find that any common investor can now tap into the real estate growth and you said yourself the real estate market has been growing it's actually outperformed the stock market over the last few years um, but the common person can't access that so the idea is that you you give them accessibility and at the same time for real estate to really grow it's a big investment it's a big capital investment uh, developers need access to money. Now, every investment nowadays is being aligned with achievement of the Vision 2030 development goals. Now, with this introduction of the REIT segment, how is this expected to contribute to achievement of these goals? For any country um, that has a strong vision, uh, housing is always at the basic, uh, you know, it's at the core of that vision because it's a basic need. Um, I mean, when you look at the shortfall of housing or you look at the housing conditions in Kenya at the moment, it's something that needs a lot of um, focus for improvement. And one of the ways to do it is to encourage private development, private developers to come into this market because the private developers have been able to deliver. If you look at the middle market, the upper market, they've done it. We've had a few government schemes, but not that many. The private market can do it, but they need to be spurred to doing it. So when you have this channel of obtaining equity, of obtaining funding, you start to sort of harness yourself towards much larger projects. Um, and that's the kind of thing that will contribute towards reducing the housing shortfall. And finally, Farhana, what is your outlook towards 2013 real estate sector, considering it's an election year? As is typical with any election year, uh, we will expect that prior to elections, uh, the level of activity in the market will drop a little bit it usually does um, not necessarily that prices will fall but simply that just the number of transactions reduce and people put on hold a lot of their decisions um, and then pick it up after the election of course there will be the odd spots of people panic selling um, but I don't imagine that there'll be a huge component of the market it's just a question of seeing a slightly quieter period until the elections um, are done with and I think if we have a peaceful outcome uh, then I think the real estate market will pick up again because it did suffer from a bit of lack of growth last year, largely to do with the interest rates, a lot of projects were put on hold. I think if the election outcome is positive, there'll be this renewed confidence in the country and we expect then real estate to pick up once again in the later half of the year.